Hey, thank you for dropping by for my daily devotions. It's Monday, June the 5th, 2023. And uh, we are going to take a look at Revelation chapter 3, Acts chapter 12, Proverbs chapter 24, and Hosea chapter 7. And, and I want to take a look at... Uh, I was thinking about the church in Ephesus in chapter 2 of Revelation. Um, he, he talks about them and he said, uh, he wasn't here. He was the church in Smyrna, one of those. Verse 4 of the second chapter of Revelation. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you fall and repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove the lampstand from its place. You know, the things we did at first, when you first come to Christ, you're, you're just all excited, you're powerful, you're into it, you're reading the Bible, you're praying, and you're, you're sold out, you know. Sometimes that fades. That happened to them. And that's what he's saying. Go back. Do the stuff you did at first. Ah, that's a great lesson. Let's pray. Father, speak to us today and uh, change our lives by what we hear and uh, make us different because we heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Revelation chapter three. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds, you have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember therefore what you have received and heard Obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my Father and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. What he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have, uh, have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not de denied my name. I will take those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you've kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take, it, take your crown. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Laodicea, write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were one or the other. So, because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. That word spit, it's an onomatopoetic word. It sounds like what it, it is. It means that he's going to puke them out of his mouth. He's, it's a very disgusting word. You say, I'm rich, I've acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit, up, to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And then Acts chapter 12.
It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by, the, by four squads of soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. I love this chapter. They're, they're having a big old prayer meeting. And then, then God answers their prayer and they go, what happened? You know, the night before Peter was to, was to, the night before Herod was to bring him out, bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and light shone him in a cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first the second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the, leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel to rescue me from Herod, from Herod's clutches and from everything that the Jewish people were anticipating. Uh, when this dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people were gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer, outer entrance, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was overjoyed. She ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter's at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting it was so, they said it must be his angel. They assumed that God was saying no to their prayers. That's an amazing, why wouldn't God say yes? Why wouldn't you assume God would say yes? You should. Okay. But Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hands to them for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the brothers about this, he said, and, and then he left for another place. In the morning, there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what, be, what had become of Peter. After Herod had a thorough search made for him and did not find him, he cross-examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. Then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there a while. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined him and sought an audience with him, having secured the support of Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king. They asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their food supply. On the appointed day, I got a plane flying over. I think that's because there's a fire not too far from here. Uh, it might not be about that. There's a plane flying over. Okay, verse 21. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a god, not a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. Whoa! Kind of powerful, isn't it? But the word of God continued to increase and spread. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem taking with them John, also called Mark. And then Proverbs chapter 24. Do not envy wicked men. Do not desire their company, for their hearts plot violence and their lips talk without making trouble. Talk, talk about making trouble. By wisdom a house is built and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. A wise man has great power and a man of knowledge increases strength. For waging war, you need guidance, and for victory, many advisors. Wisdom is too high for a fool. In the assembly of the gate, at the gate, uh, he has nothing to say. Who plots evil? Will, he who plots evil will be known as a schemer. The schemes of folly are sin, and men detest mocker, a mocker. If you falter in times of trouble, how small is your strength? Rescue those being led away to, to death, Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will, not, will he not repay each person according to what he's done? Eat honey, my son, it is good. Honey from the comb is sweet to your taste. 
Know also that wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, there is a future. There is future a future hope for you. If you uh, and you will not be cut off. Do not lie and wait like an outlaw against a righteous man's house. Do not raid his dwelling place. For though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. But the wicked are brought down to calamity. Do not gloat when your enemy falls. When he stumbles, do not let your heart rejoice. Or the Lord will see and disapprove and turn his wrath away from him. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of the wicked. For the evil man has no future hope and the lamp of the wicked will be snuffed out. Fear the Lord and, fear the Lord and the king, my son, and do not join with the rebellious. For those two will send sudden destruction upon them. And he who knows what calamity they who and who knows what calamity they can bring. These also are the sayings of the wise. To show partiality and judging is not good. We need to figure that out in this country, don't we? Whoever says to the guilty, You're innocent, peoples will curse him and nations denounce him. But it will go well with those who convict the guilty, and rich blessings will come upon them. An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. Finish your outdoor work, get your fields ready. After that, build your house. In other words, you know what? That's important. Take care of the way you're going to make a living and then put up a beautiful home or whatever. First things first. You've got to know how you're going to survive. Do not testify against your brother without cause or use your lips to deceive. Do not say, I will do to him as he has done to me. I'll pay back the man for what he did. I went past the field of the sluggard, past the vineyard of the man who lacks judgment. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man. Then Hosea chapter 7. Whenever I would, would heal Israel, the sins of Ephraim are exposed and the crimes of Samaria revealed. They practice deceit, thieves break into houses, bandits rob in the streets. But they do not realize that I remember all their evil deeds, their sins engulf them, they are always before me. They delight the king with their wickedness, the princes with their lies. They are all adulterers, burning like an oven whose fire the baker did not, need not stir from the kneading of the dough till it rises. On the day of the festival of your king, the princes become inf inflamed with wine and he joins hands with mockers. Their hearts are like an oven, they approach him with intrigue. Their passion smolders all night. In the morning it blazes like a flame of fire, a flaming fire. All of them are hot as an oven. They devour their rulers and their kings fall and none of them calls on me. Ephraim mixes with the nations. Ephraim is a flat cake not turned over. Foreigners sap his strength, but he does not realize it. His hair is sprinkled with gray and he does not notice. Israel's arrogance testifies against him, but despite all this, he does not turn to the Lord his God or search for him. Ephraim is like a dove, easily deceived and senseless, now calling to Egypt, now turning to Assyria. When they go, I will throw my net over them. I will pull them down like birds of the air. When I hear them flocking together, I will catch them. Woe to them because they have strayed from me. Destruction to them because they have rebelled against me. I long to redeem them, but they speak lies to me. They do not cry out to me from their heart, from their hearts, but wail upon their beds. They gather together for grain and new wine, but turn away from me. I trained them and strengthened them, but they plot evil against me. They do not turn to the Most High. They are like a faulty bow. Their leaders will fall by the sword because of the insolent, their insolent words. For this, they will be ridiculed in the land of Egypt. Ah, the Lord has spoken. I hope you're blessed by it. And I hope you have a great, great day and a great week. Let's take a minute and pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us, for impacting our lives with the truth we find in your word. Make us new and different because we heard from you. Apply it to our lives with the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.